Hey guys, it's a me, Mario, and I'm back with a fun little project that involves retro games. To play classic games like Super Mario, Metroid, The Legend of Zelda, and many others like Pokemon, this Arduino game controller project was constructed. The internals of this NES GBA controller are buttons soldered on a perf board connected to a Shao M0 development board which powers the entire controller. The controller's body is entirely 3D printed. The Shao M0 SAMD21 development board from Seed is compatible with the GamePad library since it support HID which is crucial for this project. This project cannot be built using well-known boards like Arduino Uno or Nano as they do not have HID support. In this video, I will show you guys how you can make this controller and how well it performs for playing retro games like Pokemon Gold and other stuff. So let's get started. A DIY keyboard, mouse, or in this case, a game controller could be made from using RP2040 based boards like the Pico and the Shao RP2040, which supports HID. This project uses the GamePad library, which does not yet support the RP2040 devices, although there could be another way to use the RP2040 as a gamepad. Simply assigning all the buttons to keyboards up, down, left, right, A, B, etc. will allow us to create a straightforward keyboard that doubles as a game controller. This will partially work, but the RP2040 will appear as a keyboard with buttons that resemble those on a game controller rather than as a game controller. Instead of the RP2040, Seed Shao M0 was utilized in this case a development board powered by a SAMD21 G18 chip that also support HID and is the same chip used in the Arduino TN. SAMD21 MCU, a 32-bit MCU with 256 KB of flash and 32 KB of SRAM and an operating speed of 48 MHz makes the Shao M0 the ideal board in this situation. It functions much like an Atomega 32 on steroids. This chip is a key component of the Seed Xiao M0, a remarkably small breadboard friendly development board that is a good alternative for standard Arduino boards. The greatest thing about this board is that it only costs $5. Check out its product page on the Seed Studios website. We first attach the Xiao board to a breadboard and start this project. The 10 I.O. pins are connected to 10 tactile buttons from D0 to D9. Each tactile button has a second pin that is connected to ground. Each I.O. pin is pulled down when the button is pressed. Shao then reads the pin status and emit a signal through the USB port. Only 10 of these buttons are utilized for the left trigger, the right trigger, up, down, left, right, start, stop and A and B respectively for the breadboard version. I'm using my previously made joystick test board, a button board built for quick prototyping of gamepad related projects. The code utilize is a simple one. However, first you must download and install the gamepad library from the URL given on this project's page. As of right now, there are only 10 buttons declared in the sketch, but more can be added by changing the code a little bit. We connect the Xiao board to the PC and then open device and printer to see if this configuration is working or not. In device and printers, you will see the Seed Xiao board, which has a gamepad logo. We right click on it and see its properties. The gamepad setup is confirmed to be functional by pressing the button sequentially from D0 to D9, which causes the button push to appear in the properties. Now we open GBA emulator. Gamepad won't work right away because the gamepad keys aren't assigned in the input setting. So we assign each key to a function which are up, down, left, right, etc. Two hours later. As you can see here, the game controller is functioning with the emulator after the key mapping and everything seems to work pretty good.
Three switch PCBs constructed of perf board or prototyping board are housed in the controller's rectangular housing, which was designed to resemble a NES or GBA gamepad. In the next iteration of this project, the button board will be built from proper PCBs. For time being, we are using perf board. This model was created after the button boards were prepared. The body was 3D printed from red PLA with 20% infill. 0.2 mm layer height and a 0.4 mm nozzle. The lid was produced using the same parameters from the black PLA. All of the board's label are optional. However, they required a finer setting such as 0.16 mm with a 0.2 mm nozzle to make them appear smooth. We begin the process of building a button board by first gathering all the necessary parts including a 12 by 12 mm tactile switch and three perf board that will be used to create distant switch assembly part, each of which will include a set of directional keys, AB keys and start and stop keys. To hold the button in their place, we first put them on the perf board and solder their pad with the soldering iron. Next, using a silver copper wire that can be recovered from THD components like LEDs register, we link the ground pin of each button to one another. Following the preparation of the button boards, we prepare the Shao expansion board using two female header pins and a perf board piece. We solder Shao pads and plug it into the perf board, properly mounting it in its place. The final product consists of three button boards with directional buttons, A, B keys, start, stop keys, and in Shao expansion board. After setting up the button board and the Shao breakout board, we begin assembling the main controller by first using hot glue to secure left and right trigger button in their place. Then we use hot glue to secure directional buttons in their place. Next we once more use hot glue to attach AB buttons board inside the game controller body. The start stop button board is finally added in its place and the hot glue is used throughout. Next, we set up a common ground for all boards by utilizing wire solder to each button spin to connect it to the ground spin on the Shao board. We next connect each I.O. pin to each button as specified in the code and the schematic using the same wiring for the breadboard edition. For instance, I.O. D0 is connected to the left trigger, D1 is attached to the right trigger, D2 is attached to up button, D3 is attached to down button, D4 is attached to left, D5 is attached to right, D6 is attached to A, D7 is attached to B, D8 is attached to start and the D9 is attached to the stop button. To learn more, you can visit this project's page. Link is in video description. As of this moment, each I.O. pin from D0 to D9 is attached to a specific switch pin and the other end of each button is connected to a common ground. When a button is pressed, the connected I.O. pin is pulled down and the Shao reads this pin which is pulled down. Using a multimeter set to continuity mode, we first examine this board soldering by placing one end of probe on an I.O. pin and other end on a switch pin. After moving the probe to any I.O. pin and ground, we press the button that is connected to the I.O. pin and continuity will beep, indicating that the I.O. pin is being pulled down. We perform this test once more on each pin to confirm that the every button is connected properly. Next, we plug the controller into the computer and open devices and printer. We did this testing before, 
So we again check the button press by checking the seat show properties. And yes, all switches are working properly. We use hot glue to securely put the Shao breakout board in its place after making sure that it's now operational and all of the buttons are linked properly. I overused hot glue for this project, but there are no rules preventing its use. Finally, we use four M2 screws to attach the cover to the controller's backside, putting the assembly process to an end. We reconnect the controller to the computer and start the emulator software. In my case, it is the Virtual Boy, a Game Boy emulator. Since the controller won't function without any device directly, we first map the keys in order to utilize it with any emulator. We can use this device to play a variety of Game Boy or NES games after mapping the controls. I do recommend you folks to get all the roams legally. My first game will be the Pokemon Gold Edition, a Game Boy Color game. Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver, the second set of games in the Pokemon series, were published in Japan on November 21, 1999. Prior games to the Gold and Silver were the Pokemon Red and Blue Edition games for the original Game Boy, which were the first game in the Pokemon series to be created for the Game Boy. The Pokemon Emerald, Ruby and Platinum games came later, and they were alright. Pokemon Light Emerald was a remake of Gold, so it was good. Personally, I like Gold Edition because it is unquestionably the best Pokemon game in the series. After beating each of Johto and Kanto's gym leader in the game's finale, we also face off against Red from the previous game at Mount Silver. If you don't already know, Red was Ash Ketchum's counterpart in the previous Pokemon Red game for the Game Boy. But he wore red attire. I then booted up the iconic Metroid game, which belongs to Nintendo's action-adventure game series. The player takes control of the bounty hunter Samus Aran, who defeats the galaxy from space pirates and the evil entities who want to use parasitic Metroid's animal as source of power. The original Metroid game which is being played here on the Game Boy emulator was published in 1986 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Because it uses the same key map that was previously set up, the controls are the same as the prior game. Finally, we give Activision's Ultimate Spider-Man, yes, the same firms that created COD, a go. The action-adventure video game Ultimate Spider-Man, released in 2005, is based on the Spider-Man character from Marvel Comics and the comic book of the same name. For PlayStation 2, Xbox, Microsoft Windows, Game Boy Advance, GameCube and the Nintendo DS, the game was released by Activision. Here, the Game Boy Advance version is being played, and I must say, it's a good game. This NES GBA controller is functioning overall. Because of the ping function in the code, it should function as a direct controller if we plug it into any game station. In the emulator, we must map the keys first, but once we save the key functioning, everything seems to perform as intended. I previously created an Xbox 360 controller that was used to play games like GTA 5. This NES GBA controller is only for retro gaming, but it could be upgraded by adding joystick to this board and become a proper analog controller. That is it for today folks. If you're interested in more projects of this sort, check out my previous work on the game consoles and game controllers. Special thanks to Seed Studio for providing Shao for this project. Along with the Shao development board series that is really maker friendly and sensor platforms like Groove Module, they also offer PCB manufacturing and even assembly services. For additional information, please check them out. That is it for now and I'll be back with a new brand new project pretty soon. Peace out.